Hello and welcome back to my series where I continue to build out this front end mentor project. If you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, I'd recommend that you start with those ones so you can check the links down below. But if you want to start with this one here and carry along from where I am, there's a link to the GitHub repo that starts exactly where we are in this video. So you can start there and just follow along from where we are here. So right now, this is what we're trying to build and this is what we have. And one thing you'll notice is the spacing of things is way off, whereas everything is really jammed together and glued together. Uh, whereas, in, you know, in the actual design, there's a lot of nice or nice, there's in, improved spacing, uh, oh, nice spacing. It's nice. It, it looks nice. We have white space galore. Uh, so that's the main thing that we're going to focus on on this one is trying to add in some of that spacing. So to get started with it, the first thing we want to do is open up the terminal. If you're following along and do an NPM, uh, ignore my naming there, but NPM install to make sure everything that we need is installed. If you're getting this from the GitHub repo and then do an NPM run dev. So we can fire up our dev server. What we're going to do is come all the way down because we've moved our utility classes down here. And uh, I'm actually going to find my container because we're going to keep it with that. And my container, oh no, even look at this. I was looking all over the place. Uh, they're all here. I didn't move these with my other stuff. Let's grab all of that uh, and bring that down with my utility classes. And we'll stick them right at the top there because uh, after visually hidden, just how I like to be organized, it doesn't really matter where they go. And we're going to add another one called flow. Uh, my flow utility class, I've talked about it before. It's something I got from Andy Bell. And we're going to do a flow. Uh, the Andy Bell way, and I've talked about this before, is like this. It's a little bit, if you do this, some people might not understand what this is actually doing. It selects, uh, let's do this actually, flow, <laughs> just so I can explain it. And we'll, we'll look at the alternative. Uh, outline, three pixels, solid, lime just so it stands out. And let's come into my index and let's go to, not my, let's, uh, right here, I guess, would be fine. This div class equals flow. And so yeah, you can see that what it's done is it hasn't chosen this first one, but it has chosen this one and my button. So it's choosing every sibling other than the first thing that's in that div. It will never, you know, if I add another uh, div, just put some text in there. Now that doesn't have the outline on it, but everything else here has the outline. So um, yeah, that's what the flow will do, but we don't want it to add outlines to stuff. We want it to add some spacing. Um, you could also call this like, uh, it's just flow because it's like the natural flow. Normally there is spacing. We've removed all of that. We want to add it back in. So I've seen it also called like block flow and other things like that. Just flow is a little faster to write. If you want a different name for it, by all means use a different name. Um, so yeah, we could do the star plus star. Another option is to use not. There is a problem with using not though, which we'll look at now, uh, which it, well, it, it's a problem because it's harder to overwrite if you have specific things, just cause this boosts specificity. Uh, so not, and then we could do last child. Uh, and then let's do an outline of th four pixels solid and we'll do a different color purple. Uh, except we want it to be not first child. Uh, you could also do this with lost child, uh, first child, last child, uh, and do the spacing on the bottom rather than, you know, you can really choose which way around you want to go on this. But you can see this does the exact same thing, a little bit easier to read, but it does boost specificity, which could be an issue. So we could also just take this whole thing and wrap it in a where. I think this will work. Uh, it's still working. Uh, the advantage with having a where on this is the specificity of it is zero. So if ever I wanted to change this, so let's just say here, um, I do my button has an outline of three pixels solid red. Uh, you can see my button has a three pixel solid red outline on it. If I take this wear off, the it doesn't. So that could be really annoying and you don't want this getting in the way. Usually utility classes, you want them to be something that if I apply this, it has to work. But because this is going to be like this general thing that's applying a, a general rule to everything inside, you might have something in there where you actually need to modify it a little bit. So keeping this as low specificity as possible is a good thing. So that's where the where selector um, or pseudo class, I guess, <laughs> pseudo class function, pseudo function, I don't know, uh, where that works out well. Um, it just making a zero specificity selector here. And instead of that, I'm going to do a margin top and we're going to do a margin top of normally I just do one M 
and then it spaces things out with like one M of spacing, which tends to work well. This design, we won't be able to do that, but I also don't do it like this. I do it var and then flow spacer comma one M. So if I don't have this defined, it will use the one M, but if I need to redefine it, it makes it very easy to apply a flow spacer somewhere and just say, oh, this section's different. I need it bigger or smaller. Um, so yeah, you just div flow spacer 5M. Uh, and then because this is a div, this overwrite, you know, I'm, a, I'm choosing something for this, so I've overwritten it. Now I did this in all my divs. Uh, normally it would probably be something much more specific here, but just to show you a little bit how that could work. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to use 1M as my default just because if we look at the design, there it is. Uh, most of the stuff in this design, the spacing is actually pretty big. Um, and it's not, uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's not consistent, but we can like here to here is 24. Here to here is, well, it's saying 16. It's not really 16 because you can see it's bigger. Uh, we talked about that. So let's say we're going to go with 24. Um, so 24 is 1.5 M. Still doesn't look quite big enough. Maybe we're going to, I think we'll stick with the default around two. Um, oh, maybe even bigger, maybe like four as the default. Something like that might work better. Um, and I just saw something else. We'll do this in this video too of fixing our paragraphs because the max width on them is also a little bit off. Um, but yeah, so now my flow, I think that's working. Eh, it looks a bit big. We'll go with three and we'll see from there. Uh, now the, the one thing with this, it does mean we need to come in everywhere with a flow that we need it. So here I need it as well. Class is my flow. And what I'll just do is copy this. Um, normally I have this in my CSS from the beginning and I don't have to stress so much. Uh, our spacing and our gap here is also going to get increased, but we'll talk more about that. Oh, we'll do that in this video too, uh, actually. So here we also need flows. Uh, and this is where I have my class numbered items. So I'm going to put the pipe just to separate a utility class from a component class. So we have my flow. Uh, and then actually on each one of these LIs as well, we're going to need it here too and here too. So we can put my classes flow on those. And this is where you can see things are too much. So on these ones, what we could also then do is style is equal to flow spacer of say now it's actually 1m to pull them in a lot closer. Uh, um, so if we look here, and actually, you know what? The space here, these are probably going to, hmm, these are going to be annoying. Uh, the space here, and again, it's good to look at mobile first, but it's the same type of idea where there's like a lot more space underneath, uh, which is normal uh, and is, is good. I like that. But uh, I just want to see if we look at my dev tools here. Oh, because it's getting it directly from that. Uh, right. Hmm. So there's two different ways we could attack this um, just to, to help with our spacing. We could do margin. I don't want to do margins on them individually. I think what I might do, it's not ideal, um, but what we're going to do is delete that. I'm going to cut this actually. Uh, let's go back to what we had. Um, so we have the flow, which is giving us the space we want. But then inside each li, I'm going to put a div, and let's just let's try it on one of them and see if this actually works. <laughs> um, class is equal to flow, and then my uh, style equals flow. Uh, flow spacer is one m. Oh yeah, I think that did work. Perfect. So uh, let's come here and come here and do the same thing. So whoops. So we can do my div class equals flow and style is equal to flow spacer one point. I guess I could have copied and pasted, but 1.5 M. Uh, and then I don't want to close those divs there. I want to close those divs all the way down here, right? Yeah. So where the closing allies are, we can close div and break everything. <laughs> Uh, oh, cause we need, I went too far. This LI should be here and this LI should be here. 
There we go, we fixed it. And there we go, okay. So yeah, if I had the flow spacer here, it was applying like that spacing on this as well. Whereas basically I want these outer elements. So these, I want these LIs to have a large space. So that 3M that we'd set up for the, the natural flow on our site. But inside the LIs, I wanted a smaller space. So I'm doing it like that where I'm setting these here. Uh, and I could even actually set these to custom properties uh, as well. You know, I, we're, we're rewriting this. So this could be my var sizes and stuff. Oh, I did one and then 1.5s. There we go. I think that looks actually pretty close to the design um, without measuring anything out. Maybe the 1.5 was a little bit closer, but we'll stick with that for now. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna do the carousel later. We're gonna fix this one later. Uh, so even here, like if you have lists like this, the color of this list is off, um, but it works anywhere you need to use it. Um, so if we come down to here where I have this, we have my list, uh, roll list, my, oh, we didn't have a class. So here, class is equal to, and I could do my uh, flow and space it out, but it's obviously way off. Um, if you find that you're rotating between different ones, this is also, you could have like a data uh, tight um, or data spacing is equal to tight. So for things that need to be like a 1M and then a loose that need to be at 6M and then your default. Again, normally on most sites, my default would be one. I just find on this site, most things tend to be much more spaced out. So that's why I'm doing it differently. Um, so yeah, you could do something like this or just have a flow and then flow tight and do it that way. If you find that you're repeating yourself, because if you're just coming in and just doing inline style every time, uh, flow spacer of 1M and you just have to keep doing that over and over and over again at one point, um, it means that you're, <laughs> you should just make a class instead of inline styling anything. Uh, some people see this even as an a bit of an anti-pattern. I don't mind having to do a little inline style just to overwrite a custom property. It's the only time I use inline styles. I think it works okay um, and just adds this little, it's like a little API that you're plugging into to like modify something. Um, but if you really don't like that idea, sort of just talked about what we can do instead. Um, so yeah, let's come in and fix those paragraphs now. And this is very rare, but... Uh, I don't generally style just par just my p tags, but we're doing it today um, because my p's need to be uh, a lot smaller. Let's or not smaller. They need to be a lot narrower, right? They need to be. They have like a max width that's pretty narrow, and the colors of them are way different. So we'll fix that. Um, we'll start with the color. Uh, they did it with an opacity of 0.5. I'm almost sure, like we're, we're matching that, but to me, that contrast ratio, I'm guessing, is too light. So let's go and check that, and oh, it's not even telling me. Is it because it's a low, see there, it's giving me the, the okay on that. Uh, because it's low opacity, I don't get it in Chrome, um, but I'm, I'm, there's no way that's high enough. <laughs> so we could just come in and say this is like a 0.7 instead. Um, that's probably dark enough. Uh, it doesn't, it's going to muck this one up a little bit, but whatever. Uh, do we do it like that? Maybe we just do the opacity. I mean, just coming in and changing the color could also work. Uh, but the max width also, it looks pretty narrow. I'm going to, it's even smaller than that. Uh, 35 CH. And it's really important to do a max width here and not an actual width. Uh, just because if you do an actual width, then... Uh, it locks it in, whereas a max width means just don't get smaller than that. I realized I use P's here, and I think they weren't doing it because you can see these are actually full size. So we'll look at a way we can get around this. But um, 38. Uh, I'm just seeing here, like, my word team is here, and in the design, team goes there. So maybe 35 was actually okay. 32. Uh, one thing that's really important when you are trying to match, like I actually got the line breaks at the same place. Don't, don't try and force that on yourself. Like it's really hard on a, a site that can adapt and things can change to actually end up with line breaks at exactly the same places. Uh, and you might even like here maybe is good. And then this next paragraph isn't, and then this next place is okay. And, uh, we could run into issues, uh, with it. So just, just to watch out for that. Um, what I'm actually going to do here too is P, uh, not class. Is that going to work? It will. 
Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because when I came down, I noticed if I don't include this, this is actually getting lower opacity, even though I wanted it to look different. Um, so P not class just means if I did other things that maybe are changing the color of it, I probably want that color that I chose to stick and not for this opacity to drop down. Uh, so this is one way we could do it. Again, maybe not changing the opacity, but changing the color is a way to go. They changed the opacity, so I'll stick a little bit with how they did it here. Um, but yeah, so that's one way you could just prevent issues from like, oh, I did change the color, but it's still semi-transparent and that's not working well. So uh, my default paragraphs, it will work on. Uh, the only issue there is I sort of wanted to make it, or we could use it. Um, so here, let's do p um, data width equals full, uh, full, or let's do wide. Let's just do wide. <laughs> Uh, is going to be a max width of uh, 100%. And the reason I'm doing that is because these definitely need to stretch out these ones that are over here. So then we could come on to those paragraphs and it just gives us without a class that's going to muck up their color. <laughs> and it's a modifier attribute and I'm sticking with the way I've started this off. So uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do is let's just go find here they are. So this one this paragraph and this one we can do a data width equals wide and there we go those actually end up at full width and then that matches more what we have here uh, maybe they're actually too wide hmm so the wide maybe doesn't get a hundred percent they get a 45 ch i'm using ch it's characters um Uh, so like, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's not, it's, it's roughly the amount of characters, but it might not be exactly the same, um, as like, if you count the characters it won't be, it's roughly the number zero. So zero's narrower than a capital M for example, um, or like a period, obviously. But yeah, there we go. That actually looks pretty good. Um, yeah, cool. I'm happy with that. That one went much shorter. It's been way shorter than my other videos in this series so far but and actually that sort of fixed that spacing issue I had between this uh, I think in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to skip the carousel we're going to come back to that one a little bit later uh, we're going to jump through these two sections we're going to come back up through and get these pseudo elements working uh, in the video after that and then we'll eventually get to this carousel and then sort of clean up all the, the loose ends and the rest of it. And if you don't want to miss out on any of those, they are coming in the not too distant future. So if you don't want to miss any of them, make sure to subscribe. And with that, a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.